according to UN Habitat, among the 19th world's largest cities, only five are not in coastal and delta areas. Unfortunately, life there is not always safe enough. In emerging economy countries, delta regions are more vulnerable. Halligat and his colleague calculate the economic losses for the delta cities in 2050. They find out that among the world's 20 delta cities, 17 will be from the, de the developing countries. Two cities are even from the same delta region, and that is the Pearl Delta of China. According to World Bank, the Pearl Delta has become the largest urban area of the world in 2014. It has been the fastest developing and most densifying urban de urbanizing delta in the world for the past four decades. It has led the Chinese urbanization and social economic transformation. However, the delta is suffering from great challenges due to climate change and environmental degradation, such as mangrove disappearance, agricultural land loss, air and water pollution, water shortage, and decreasing social security. On the one hand, the region is exposed to increasing flood risk. The existing infrastructure system cannot cope with this situation. Because the rising sea level and extreme typhoon and storm in the summer. On the other hand, the ecosystem is getting increasingly fragmented and vulnerable. It's reaching the limit of the environmental carrying capacity for further urban development. But it is usually very hard to study those fast developing delta regions because the spatial data is not easy to get, and the data is easily out of date with such limitations. How can we find out the resilient possibilities for these delta regions? Mapping can be one of the solutions. Let's do some exercises on the pair of delta to show how mapping can help us to understand. I collect data from many sources, such as geological studies, historical maps, archives, master plans, and field trip with the GPS. The information is sometimes in the form of number, text, or graphic. Therefore, we need tools to specialize them. We can do this by locating the information on the map. I have tracked three types of spatial change on the map. The landscape development with information of land cover, water infrastructure, with information of dike location and lens, and urbanization processes with information of built-up area. The reason of doing so is because of the nature of different developing speed. Imagine there are three springs. The first one is really slow to return to its former shape when released. It takes about 30 years to a century for it to recover. That is a spring of landscape. The second spring is kind of fast to recover. It takes 10 to 30 years. That is a spring of water infrastructure. And the last spring is very fast to recover. It only takes a few years. That is a spring of urbanization. The three springs are bound together, and all of them are important for our life in the delta. The landscape layer ensures our ecological resilience. The water infrastructure layer protects us from flood, and the urbanization layer provides social and economic prosperity. If we change something in the delta, all the three springs will be affected. And it takes a longer time for the slower springs to recover. Therefore, we need to think of all the three layers and provide space for the slower layer to recover. Now, let's see those maps. The map of landscape started about 6,000 years ago. It shows how the delta has developed. The delta is developing faster and faster. So I have used smaller time frames for the more recent maps. I use the same time frame to create maps for water infrastructure. We can see how the dikes have developed since about 1,000 years ago. We also have two maps for the urbanization. Usually, this kind of map is not very easy to get for such a large region. But you can try to combine maps of each city. This will provide an overview for important spatial characteristics of the region. 
after drawing the maps, the most interesting part begins. We can now compare the maps. So we get to know more about how the delta developed and if there is a link among the different layers. From the overlaying maps, we find out that the water infrastructure integration has influenced the urban pattern. Large areas inside the powders have changed from farmland into urban area. People used to live in the high ground or elevated dike. Now, they step down and build cities in the low land, with the wish to use the dike to protect all their belongings against the water. With the large and complex dike system, it is hard for local citizens to realize their decisions have changed data fundamentally. Their decisions have changed their urban pattern in the delta scale. It is an urban pattern that heavily depends on the dike system in the delta scale. Such unawareness also makes the plans and design less likely to meet increasing flood risk. So, now you have an idea of what mapping can do. It helps us to understand the complex system and makes it easier for us to discuss this with others. In this way, mapping provides possibilities for better design and plans. In the next session, an empirical case in the Peridota will be discussed.